I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about I took her for granted. Mm. One of the things that I think happens with people is taking people for granted in our life. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to just expect people to stay no matter what. That just because they've entered our life that they're going to stay there forever mm -hmm. no matter how we treat them no matter how much we mistreat them or neglect them or think that things are supposed to go our way yeah. and not considering the other person's needs mm -hmm. but sometimes people just get tired of it so you always want to consider are you taking the people in your life for granted do you are you thoughtful to mm -hmm. what their needs are because they probably have different needs than you do exactly and this goes particularly for dating because you're often going to wind up with somebody who has a different attachment style than you do mm -hmm. and that means they're going to have a lot of different needs so just be aware that if you take people for granted and you just wind up in a relationship where you're sitting on the couch every day and your partner's saying why won't you go to this baseball game with me? Or why won't you go mm -hmm. to this concert with me? Why won't you go see this comedy show with me? Eventually, they're going to get tired and frustrated and might even leave. Exactly. You have to remember that people have a choice to stay in a relationship or not. That just because they enter a relationship with you doesn't mean that it's going to be forever. Every day is a choice to stay in that relationship. So you want to treat it as such. And you also want to remember that they could leave you at any time for any reason. Mm -hmm. And when you keep that in the back of your mind, it's going to make you more likely to treat that person well. Exactly. So today I've got an email coaching that we're going to go over from a guy that is in his early 20s. And I thought this was an interesting one that I thought you guys would like. So he said, hey, Coach Craig, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Jonathan and I am 21 years old. I'm writing you because I'm currently going through the worst time I've ever had in my life. Mm. I had to watch several of your videos to get the conclusion that you are probably the only online coach that can help me getting through my breakup. We are very passionate about breakups and they have had a huge impact on me my entire life. Both my parents were married three times. My parents split up when I was a year and a half old. Mm and that caused me to have massive amounts of anxiety in my life separation anxiety going to my dad and being away from my mom and so i understand you know through putting this together for years and going through my own painful breakups and exploring that with margaret over the years mm -hmm. we've been able to spend years processing it understanding and growing and that's why you see a difference in what we do than the other wannabes out there, as you put it. And you'd also be surprised to see how much we learn from you guys. And even in the calls, just how much, how many different patterns that we see over time um, and the different things that can happen, the endless possibilities that can happen in breakups that we do see and hear from you directly. Yeah. And I brought Coach Victoria on board because when I was going through my own breakups years ago, mm -hmm. one in particular, she was very insightful. Remember how I talk about most people don't know what they're talking about and have no idea? She had a good barometer that most people didn't have. And that was back then when I knew nothing. And that was probably about uh, probably about eight years ago, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And so, you know, over the years, I kind of talked to her over breakup, about breakups and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why she's on board because she's got a good instinct for it. Mm. So let me go on. So... The girlfriend is also 21 years old, and he says, We had a wonderful relationship, getting through school together, starting an apprenticeship, becoming an adult, and started studying for a bachelor's degree, 
and even went to another country for a month at the end of 2019. Mm. We really had a wonderful relationship. However, becoming an adult and facing more responsibilities started to make us become distant. Mm. That happens. Yeah. Right? Like once you start transitioning to the adult world because mm-hmm. they were younger, now you have to take on a lot more things that you weren't ready for. Right. And it seems like they went through a lot of big landmarks together as far as moving and school and all of that. Those are big things to go through as a couple. Yeah. Yeah. He goes on to say that during the last two years, both of us didn't really invest into the relationship Mm. because we, or at least I, took everything for granted. Mm. What do you think would happen in a situation like this? Over time, the connection just gets lost and diminished because a connection is like a live thing. It's like a tree or like a, even a little baby where you have to take care of it and make sure that it's being fed regularly and changed regularly. And uh, you know, relationships can just die down when there's no life or excitement. And it sounds like in this situation, a lot of their attention was focused on other life events that were going on. Yeah, and he's saying for two years. Yeah. That's a really long time to get more and more disconnected from somebody else. Exactly. All right, let me go on. Since we both live with our parents, we often just hung out in our rooms and watched some Netflix together or went out with friends. However, with the COVID crisis, that made things much harder because getting to a bar or restaurant became impossible. Mm. Obviously understandable. Mm -hmm. I really think that made us becoming more distant. Even though we saw each other at least once a week, the quality of the romantic time was missing. Hmm. I really think that it's important to court your partner even after many, many years. Yeah. Going out, finding a way to do fun things together is so important to keeping it fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this is a problem that many couples had, especially during COVID. Now you're assessing how safe is this person being, how safe is that person being. After you meet, then maybe the more anxious person might be like, oh God, now I have COVID. There might be grandparents that are living in the home or something. Exactly. So this gets very complicated. And I'm not sure how often they saw each other before COVID, but it sounds like he was saying that there was a drastic change in the amount of time they spent together as well. Yeah, it uh, it sounded like about once a week, but maybe there were points during COVID where that decreased. Yeah. So let's go on. I've always loved her, and I knew that I loved her. However, I think I didn't make her feel it that much. Mm. At the end of January 2021, I went to her home after our first bachelor's exams and realized something was wrong with her. It was in that moment that I realized she had lost a lot of weight, and she was never overweight at all. I asked her if something was wrong, with the exams, if someone had died, if she was pregnant, Mm. and the last thing, if she loves me. Mm. And she said, I somehow have no more feelings. Wow. Shocking. Yeah. Out of nowhere for him. Yeah, and this could be a number of things. It kind of sounds like she might have been depressed even during this time to lose all of that weight and just to have that physical change happen. Yeah, that it had been going on for some time and he hadn't really noticed. Yeah. You know, he is young. He's a young guy. You know, he might have not been as emotionally attuned as like Mm. somebody that's a little bit more mature and Mm -hmm. has more wisdom to say something doesn't seem right, you know? Right. And it seems like she didn't bring it to the table as well. So that's why I'm wondering if there's possibly a lack of energy there or something that's keeping her from telling him about this, whether it be an avoidant attachment style or something else at play. Just yeah. speculating. Yeah. Certainly all those options are on the table, I think, too. Mm-hmm. It was the moment I realized my world was getting dark. It was that moment I personally realized how much I loved her. Mm. I'll tell you, I see this all the time. Oftentimes we take people for granted until they say they're going to leave us. And then all of a sudden we realize how important they really are to us. Yeah. And that's why I was talking up front about taking people for granted. 
you really don't want to take people for granted because you don't know when stuff like this can happen. Mm -hmm. And if you're not courting your partner and taking them out and trying to, you know, keep the relationship alive and fun, at some point they could just say, you know, it's just we're going through the motions, but there's not really anything there. Exactly. And I could see how somebody could go the opposite end of the spectrum where they're so afraid of losing their partner that they suffocate them instead mm -hmm. of taking them for granted in that way. But I guess it is also possible to be more anxious and also take your partner for granted when you're more concerned with your needs or how your partner's going to fulfill your needs. That's big. Mm -hmm. That's a big point that I think a, a lot of people overlook. Mm -hmm. They think that things are supposed to go their way. Right. Like the relationship is supposed to go how I expect it to go mm -hmm. or want it to go. But it's not like that. Right. You have to consider what your partner views things or how they mm -hmm. view things. Exactly. All right. He says, I realized what loving someone really means. We both cried and I was in deep shock. Mm. In an attempt to re-attract her, I made literally all the classic mistakes. I begged and pleaded, and I felt she was unsure about her decision. She even told me that she just doesn't know what she wants and needs time. We then even went on a couple of dates and ended in bed one day. Mm. All right, so it sounds like they got the spark going a little bit there. Mm -hmm. There was some traction going on. I wonder what happened, right? This story continued for about six weeks. But I felt that it just wasn't the same anymore. I bet he was trying too hard. It could have been. It could have been. And that um, he was kind of smothering her mm -hmm. by trying to regain it to where it was. And it was probably overwhelming her. Right. That would be what I'd speculate there. Yeah. And it is unfortunate, but there could be a time where in your ex's mind they think, now it's too late. Now that you see that I'm in this desperate position, mm -hmm. now you care? Yeah. Did you not notice these past couple months that I haven't been feeling well or whatever, whatever it could have been? Um, and sometimes people might expect you to intuit how they're feeling. Um, and this can go along with the avoidant attachment style as we talked before on the channel about it. Um, but I wonder if this could also be at play. Yeah. Ideally, even if um, your partner does notice something too late, the ex would be open to that and be able to say, okay, well, now let's move from here forward. But a lot of times you got to catch it before that breakup. Yeah, exactly. All right, let me go on. He said, I was needy and clingy all the time. See, just what I thought he was yeah. going to do, which made things even worse. As you can expect, the day came and she told me that she just isn't happy anymore. And she hoped that her feelings would have changed, but they didn't. Mm. I'm not surprised by this because he was trying so hard to repair it yeah. that it became unnatural and uneven. Yeah. And so she probably was just like, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. She wasn't getting excited about him. He was like trying in an unnatural way, which mm -hmm. happens sometimes. Yeah. She said that the last two years often felt like we were just best friends. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with being best friends. That's nice that you can be best friends with your partner. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure that there's the romantic side to it, too, where you're mm -hmm. going on dates and sparking up that interest. Right. Did they say how long they were together? They were together since they were like 14 years mm -hmm. old. Okay. And they're 21 now. Mm -hmm. So a long time. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. And what can happen in those long-term relationship is the dynamics can shift to a more platonic friendship, especially when they've lived through so many landmarks of their life together, developmental milestones together. Um, so I can see that that was a part of um, what was at play here also. I think so too. You know, it's nice to be friends with your partner and mm -hmm. to have a good friendship. You just want to make sure that there's the romantic aspect of it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's just, you know, cuddling together or, you know, obviously sex and intimacy is important. Mm -hmm. But dates and courting them, taking mm -hmm. them on dates. You want to do the things that you would do early in a relationship mm -hmm. throughout a relationship. You know, maybe it's banter, playful banter yeah. with flirting mm -hmm. and sexual in innuendos. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the stuff that keeps the, the romance alive. And it can be hard when you know all of the ins and outs of your partner. Mm -hmm. You know how they leave the toothpaste on the sink or whatever it is. The intricacies of your partner over so long from knowing them years after years. And so it can be hard to have that romantic connection when you see them as another human being and all of their 
idiosyncrasies as you are. Yeah. Um, so a part of that mystery and that attraction and that curiosity can be gone um, or easily missed, I'll say that. Yeah, and taken for granted, but you have to work at it, mm -hmm. okay? Let me go on here, there's a little more. We both cried a lot because we knew it was now time to let go. In my emotional state, I told her that I really hope that we will reunite one day. She told me that she knows how much I love her, but she just can't give me the love back. Mm. Her words were, I don't want to take all your hope, but I just don't think that things will turn around. You often tell in your videos that exes often tell things in a moment that can change by time. But as you know, these are words you can't just forget. I also keep obsessing over my mistakes all the time, before and after the breakup. There is one video on your channel which covers quite close to my story. And he was talking about uh, breaking your own heart, the dumpers experience. Mm. I haven't heard from her in five weeks. As you may know, I just can't let go of this person I've been together with since 14 years old. Mm. We do live quite close to each other. It's about a 10 minute walk. So chances are really high we will cross our paths one day, but I'm really afraid of that. Many thanks for all you're doing. Much love to you and Margaret. Take care and stay safe. Do you have any advice for me and what do you think? Is there a spark of hope for me? Mm. Okay, let me start here. Go ahead. Obviously, you've been with this woman for a long time, seven years, your entire childhood and adult life. I don't say mm -hmm. you, you're early. You know what I mean? You're teens. Yeah, teen years, yeah. As a big, huge component of life mm -hmm. and aspect of life, she's certainly never going to forget you, right. no matter what happens. Yeah. You won't forget somebody that you've gone through 14 no. to 21 with. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the transition to adulthood led to this relationship being neglected. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're now getting to that phase of adulthood where mm -hmm. they're starting to find their own identity as exactly. real adults. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it, um, that developmentally they're at a place where now they're trying to explore and find out who, they're, who they are mm -hmm. and their identity um, is being formed. And Margaret has a ton of videos that we recently did um, on this exact topic. So I think this is a lot of the conflict that's happening is figuring out who I am in the world. Traveling seemed to be part of it. School, these are all life decisions that kind of form your career, form who you are, form aspects of what you like to do and um, things that are quintessential to who you present as. So I think this is a really big factor in why this relationship fell apart is that it seemed like a lot of attention was on those things and appropriately so developmentally. Mm -hmm. um, however, it did seem to get in the way of their intimacy. Margaret has said in the past, there is a way to grow together. Um, but this does take a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of intentionality. Yeah. I think for both of you, this is a chance for really to grow into who you are. Mm -hmm. You guys are really young and you've had a wonderful history together. The relationship shifted to more of a platonic situation where it was maybe being neglected a bit. And I'm mm -hmm. guessing because of school and work and all the things going on in your life. Yeah. But now I think it would be healthier for you to both kind of figure out who you are in this world. And I think you need to spend some time alone and having new experiences to do that, both mm -hmm. of you. And it would be, I think, in both of your best interest in this situation to have some time to figure out who you are, mm -hmm. have some new life experiences, and see if you guys can come back together yeah. at some point. Yeah. But I honestly think that if you guys get back together right now, it will probably lead to a breakup in the near future mm -hmm. where one or both of you will say, you know what? I need to be alone for, to figure myself out, to figure out my own identity. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it. And also another thing that can happen with long-term relationships is that the partner doesn't really believe that you're going to change. 
Um, so it's kind of interesting that this is happening, that they started so early. So mm -hmm. they are in the process of changing. I'm sure the relationship has changed a ton since they were 14. Who you're becoming can also be the relationship skills that you build on. You're becoming a better partner. You're becoming a more um, intentional and well-rounded individual, not only for yourself, but for your partner or your future partner. Yeah. I don't think there was any malice here mm -hmm. or any desire to hurt you or anything like that. I think in a way what she's doing is really healthy for both of you mm -hmm. to say, you know, I love you and I really want the best for you. But right now I've got to become who I need to be and figure out who the hell that is. Yeah. And lastly, I do think that this time apart will also inject a little bit more mystery. Um, that mystery that was lacking or seemed to be lacking in the relationship and how often relationships can get so stagnant. So I think when you do explore and find your own identity, that will be a new identity for either your ex to explore or somebody new to explore. And I think that's really exciting, even if it is very difficult for you right now. I know that gut-wrenching feeling, um, but if you have that positive forward thinking and think, okay, this is not going to be forever, um, things will change. There will be excitement in the future and you're in your early 20s. So there is a fun aspect to it, even though I know things aren't fun right now, yeah. um, but hang in there. Yeah, you might have another opportunity to repair this. I would just say, don't try and force it. Right. Because you want her to come back and see if you guys can grow together and build another solid mm -hmm. foundation from here. But you guys are very young in your adult life mm -hmm. and oftentimes people at that age just simply aren't ready for a long-term relationship mm -hmm. so you got to respect that and understand that okay tough situation i know i know it sucks to be in it and i know how bad it hurts believe me i really do um we're just trying to give you some wisdom that we see based on experience and let her come back at her speed and you can take it from there. Um, hopefully you found this one helpful. Of course, if you need to get my help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. And Coach Victoria will continue to be here and train with us. I'll be here. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.